Hello everyone, welcome back. I wanted to start this video referencing one of the comments left on my last video. It was from Ryan. Thank you so much for your comment. You guys leave the most thoughtful comments and I really enjoy going through all of them and hearing your thoughts. So I have loved really opening up and having these long extended conversations with you guys. So I've just finished the background on this one and I have got the fan in trying to dry it at the stage that it's at right now but as you know it's oil paint so it doesn't dry that easily it takes just takes time but this will help the taps to evaporate a little bit. The thing is with um, these washi backgrounds is that the paint just keeps falling because it's oil. I love where it's at now but all of this is just going to keep falling down the canvas so I'm just really wanting it to stop moving now and to just stay as is, but I guess we'll see. Okay, so this is how it dried. Um, looks pretty good. I think I've definitely lost some of that really nice dripping that happened. I just have no idea how to like preserve that effect. It did just continue to run down the track down the page but it still looks really nice like it's got this really nice aged kind of look to the canvas yeah so I'm gonna cut this in half and then I will start thinking about my compositions Ryan said something really interesting and he was talking about some lessons from Picasso as I referenced a Picasso quote and you know I love Picasso I think he was a great artist he was very problematic as well, but I feel like there is a lot to gain from his confidence and the way that he saw himself as an artist. I feel like there's some really valuable, insightful things to gain as an artist yourself to look at the life of Picasso. I actually saw one of Picasso's artworks in a gallery recently and in all honesty, like his work isn't that beautiful, like it's okay, but it's actually quite ugly and that is my personal opinion what i love about picasso is his philosophy and ryan so eloquently quoted that he failed as an artist every day of his life he created around 50,000 pieces of art and most of it was pretty terrible if he was lucky one in a thousand pieces were a masterpiece but one in a thousand pieces when you created 50,000 pieces gives you 50 masterworks probably more than any other recognized artist in history. And then Ryan ended the quote with, never be afraid to fail. And I love that. I've already created so many videos talking about how important failure is as an artist and how essential it is to really work into your own style and become an artist in your own right. You really have to go through those phases of failure. So if it feels like you're doing a really bad job and if nothing's working out, you're probably on the right track because you really need to go through those phases to find your feet and to become who you are as an artist. To celebrate my shift into painting, I have reduced all of my charcoal drawing courses to $49 because my whole career up until this point was based around charcoal drawings. I really just wanted to create these courses and make them a lot more accessible for you guys. So if you're interested in learning how to either draw a tiger or how to use charcoal in general, I have two online courses, how to draw a tiger masterpiece and the ultimate charcoal techniques course, both for $49 each. So if you're interested in learning how to draw, they are a great place to start. I really couldn't be happier with the direction that my work is currently taking. I feel like there's this softness that is tying all of my artworks together and lately I've been really focused on embracing the feminine energy because I feel like I can express it really well. I think that's something that comes naturally to me and I really feel like that feminine energy is really coming through these artworks and it is really exciting because I can see them all being tied together. This transition into the sepia kind of burnt umber tones is a real change for me after just using black and only kind of using black to create those really dark and bold portraits. This is something that's a lot softer and warmer and I think eventually I'm going to transition into something that's quite light and I'll 
Eventually I'll get more of a grasp on colour theory and I'll be able to do these oil paintings in full colour, which for me is probably still a very muted palette, but I will be able to create whites that have lots of warm and cool tones and is using, you know, the full colour spectrum. But for now I'm really enjoying painting with just one tone, which is in itself quite challenging. But I am such a fan of monochromatic artworks, I think that they're so beautiful in their simplicity and their space. I feel like there's a real stillness to monochromatic artworks and I'm really able to just focus on the values and creating an artwork that is harmonious in its composition and its value space. And then later on down the line, I will layer all of those principles with color theory and then hopefully I'll be able to create the artworks that I really have been looking forward to painting. I have never studied art, I've never been to art school, I actually studied filmmaking and I worked in television for a few years, so I'm not a trained artist, but I do have a very natural inclination towards art and I grew up with art all around me and my mum's an artist and my great auntie was an amazing artist and so I feel like it's something that has really come naturally to me, but what has made the most sense in my journey as an artist is kind of focusing on one aspect at a time and as I was just saying if you're not sure where to start I would start with monochromatic artworks and really focusing on the basics of proportion and values and composition and all of those sorts of things and getting those few things right and the technical skills of using all the materials and the pigment all of those things within themselves are incredibly challenging and it can be enough to make you want to give up as an artist. So if you are an aspiring artist, I would just say to start with one of these elements and just find a way to focus on that and then move through the rest of the principles slowly. Oil painting is a whole nother ball game, honestly. <laughs> I feel like I always say that though. This has to be though, like one of my favorite pieces I've done so far. I really feel like it's capturing the essence of what I wanted to do when I first started doing these like brownie orange drawings slash paintings. Yeah, I'm doing a few different techniques. So I'm building the painting up over many, many layers and um, I do like a really thin, what they call glaze, and um, I think I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm loving the switch up of the medium. I think it's really working out for me. <laughs> I've also done this one. I don't think I'm going to do a video on that, but I'm just doing like some really basic studies of drapery. This one I don't love as much, but it's stapled to the wall, so I can't, <laughs> I can't take it down. So just pretend that doesn't exist. Okay. I do the physical art making through the day if I can and then at night I really try and do some sort of theory every night and I try and just absorb as much as I can because I think theory is as important as the actual practice of art making. For me I feel like in Australia especially the art scene here is very contemporary and I actually am not seeing a whole lot of classical artworks like my own work. I feel like everything's very modern and abstract, which is so beautiful within itself, but I really wanted to do something unique. And to do that, I've gone back to the 14th century. I really wanted to bring a piece of the Renaissance into the 21st century. And I am very aware that the Renaissance was a time where women weren't actually seen as citizens. So part of my work is really inspired by the idea of creating my artworks on behalf of all of those women that weren't allowed to create their work. And I feel really blessed that I was born in a time where I do have the ability to create my work and share it with others. But women in the art world are still massively underrepresented and I really want to create my work for them. Men over decades have made so many paintings of women, but I really wanted to be a woman that is making really beautiful and elegant paintings of other women and really lifting up the female form and show it in all its beauty as a female perspective. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm sorry if it was a little bit all over the shop. I have so many thoughts at the moment. I'm feeling very inspired, so it was very hard to 
focus all of my energy onto one idea, but I hope that you got something out of this. Make sure to leave me a comment. You know, it means the world to me. And also, if you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments as well, because I might even make a video around one of your questions. I hope you have an amazing week. Go buy my course. If you haven't already, you're going to get so much value from it. I love you guys so much. Have an amazing week. Thank you.